What's going on everybody and welcome back to Meadow Green Homesteading. So today I'm very excited to show you a project that we just completed at our barn and that is rainwater collection and storage of 825 gallons of water for our chickens and our pigs. If you are interested in a project like this, there are two important things that you do need to know. The first is the rate, uh, how much water you can collect off of the barn roof or the roof of your house. Over here, I'm going to display a graphic on how you would calculate that in gallons per hour. I'm also gonna show a graphic over here that shows you once you have that gallons per hour rate, what size pipe of PVC that you will need to use. Now this video is going to be a little bit more different than our typical videos. It's a little bit longer in length. Now if you wanna see just the details on plumbing from the gutter down to the IBC totes and the front of these IBC totes, go ahead and skip to this timestamp right here. But otherwise, I'm gonna get building on the frame, get the gutters up. We're skipping the intro because we have a lot of work to do. All right, so this is where we're starting at. We have a nice clean area where we're going to be putting the IBC totes. I've gone through, shored up all these barn boards with some screws. That way everything's nice and tight. I don't have to deal with it behind the IBC totes once everything's in place. I have one, two temporary posts all set up. I'm going to go ahead and dig this hole, get the first post in the ground, and then move on to the six posts that I'm going to be putting in. I'm gonna try and blow through this really quick. That way I can get to the rainwater and the water storage portion of this video. So hang with me, I'll be right back. There's a lot of worms in here. I feel like I should put them aside and go give them to the chickens. All right, so there you have it. We have the frame all made for the IBC totes, and it may look a little bit beefy to you, but three 275 gallon IBC totes is 6,600 pounds. So a little overkill in this case is a good thing. Now, tomorrow morning, I'm gonna come up and start on the rain collection. It's getting a little bit laid out in this dinner time, so I'll catch you in the morning. You guys are impossible. All right, so we made it up here the next morning and it's a little bit cooler today and we have some rain moving in, so we gotta work a little bit quicker. Uh, we did get the IBC totes fitted on the frame last night. Everything's looking really good there. We do have a little bit of extra frame that I might trim a little bit later on, but for right now, my focus is going to be getting the gutter up on the roof. Now the downside of this roof does not have a fascia on it. So what I need to do is cut some two by four blocking, get that screwed in and then get the two by six fascia that I have up there and give myself something for the gutter to screw into. So we're gonna get going on that. Like I said, the rain is moving in. So Gabrielle is on her way up here to help. Let's get to work. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right guys, so as you can see behind me, we've got the gutter all installed. We have our fascia up. I put all the seam sealer in, all the hangers are on. Now it's time to move on to the main focus of this video and what I want to put the most detail into, and that's the rainwater collection system. The first part of this rainwater collection system is actually what you would call like a first stage filtration. And the purpose of this first stage filtration is actually to filter out whatever debris has landed on the roof in between rainfall. We're gonna get working on that. Let's move around to the other side of the barn and go from there. All right, so here we are at the beginning of the filtration system. Now, we are going to be using this leaf eater. You can find these on Amazon. We're going to be coming right out of this spout with an elbow that feeds down into another piece of pipe. And then the elbow is going to end right over this leaf eater. The leaf eater has a metal screen down inside, which is removable so you can clean it. And they do provide three or four inch adapters for whatever size PVC that you're using. So we're going to get this hung, get it in place, get the rest of the guttering on and riveted in place. Then I'm going to come back and show you how to do the first stage filtration system. Okay, so it's time to start plumbing this together. Now, our filtration system is gonna start up here with a leaf eater, and it's gonna go about five feet long, and at the bottom is gonna be a ball valve. That ball valve, when you open it up, will release all the debris and the dirty water off that first flush off the roof. So I'm gonna block the leaf eater off the barn a little bit, so I can have plenty of clearance around that pipe if I need to service it. Let's get the filtration system on, and then we'll start plumbing the IBC totes. Now we gotta find our four to three inch adapter, get that glued on. Now these adapters, um, I found when we did our shed ring collection, that the PVC glue did not hold overly well, so it actually failed and the whole system fell off. So what I did on the shed was just put two screws in here. I'm gonna glue it as well as put screws in, and we'll go from there. So we're gonna prime the joint first. Prime our adapter. We're gonna glue the adapter. And get this guy right on, right where we want him. What we gotta do next is put this piece of three inch pipe, which is about four to five inches long, into this three to two inch T adapter. The T adapter has kind of a slope. You want the slope going down. That way water cannot get pulled right into your rainwater collection system if that's your IBC totes or your 55 gallon barrel. You want the water to fill up down here and then flow out. So orient it this way, we're gonna glue and get this set into place. When you're gluing these PVC fittings, you always want to use primer. And then when you put the piece of pipe into a fitting, it's going to want to push out. So good practice is to just give it a nice firm push and twist at the same time. The PVC glue is going to set up pretty quickly. Um, so you want to give this just a minute to cure, but it will hold in place after about 10 to 15 seconds. All right, so our T-fitting is glued into place, that's holding. Next, we wanna cut another four inch section of three inch pipe, and then we want to get a three to two inch straight adapter that's gonna feed down into our filtration. Next, we're going to cut a piece of three inch long, two inch OD pipe. And then we're going to glue on the bottom of that, another adapter.
wonder how many plumbers I'm making cringe right about now. All right, so before I continue this part, I'm going to completely assemble this part off the platform that I'm standing on. So what I'm going to do now is cut a piece of two inch pipe that is long enough to come out around the barn. And then I'm going to put a 90 degree elbow on the other end of that pipe and slightly angle it down, feeding towards the first IBC tote. So let's go ahead and grab that measurement. Looks like about, we'll do 10 and a half inches. Okay, so let's step down. We'll build this part and then we'll plumb the IBC totes. All right, so what I have in front of me is a piece of four foot long, three inch diameter PVC. The other end of this is going to go onto where we've been working. This end is going to feed into this three inch flexible coupling into a piece of four inch long, three inch diameter PVC. And then we have a three to two inch adapter. We have a threaded cap, this is half inch MPT, that slides right into this adapter. Then we have a half inch MPT to half inch diameter PVC uh, adapter. This is going to go with a piece of say one inch long half inch OD PVC. We'll glue this together like that. This is going to be at the bottom of the system. That way once in a while you can come through, you can flip open this valve, open up and dump all the dirty water out of the system. I use this flexible coupling right here because I like to take from here off the system about once a year and just kind of wipe it out, make sure there's no contaminants in it. So we're gonna go ahead and start getting this all assembled and glued together. Then we'll stick it on the system and go from there. Slide him over the end. Push it about halfway down, somewhere in there. Tighten one clamp up. Now we've got our little stubby section of PVC. We're going to slide in there. I'm going to butt it all the way up against the piece that's already in there. Go ahead and tie this down. Okay. Now we can glue and prime all the rest of the PVC pieces. I'm also just prime everything all at one time. This you can put Teflon tape on. In my case, I'm gonna glue it. The gluing is gonna seal it, and it's never gonna be coming off anyways. We take this off instead of unthreading this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and glue this on when we get to that point. Go ahead and start assembling. So we're gonna glue the pipe first. Thread this as far in as we can get it. Oh man, that glue, PVC glue cures really quickly. Let's go ahead, primer up at the other end of this, get the glue on it, and stick it in. I'm gonna be a little careful with the glue here. I do not want glue seeping down into the ball valve and sealing this valve. So what I'm gonna do is glue just the pipe. And that way when I stick the ball valve on, it'll actually push the glue up and away from the ball valve itself. All right, so we got the ball valve glued in and I'm at the point now where I think I should explain how this system works. And it's a good time to do that because I forgot the most important part of the system. And that is this ball, which goes right inside of that three inch pipe. And it's a good thing that we had the foresight to put that removable coupling on because now we can easily slip this guy in. The way this works is rain will come off the gutter and it will come down this pipe first, right? So it starts to collect at the bottom, it slowly fills up. 
when it fills up, the ball will continue to float up with the top of the water line until it hits that three to two inch coupling right there, right in the center of the screen. And it will plug this three inch pipe. Then all the clean water coming off the roof gets forced out here and down to your totes. So let's take this coupling off, get the ball in, and then we can call this part complete. It doesn't really matter in this system with the way I'm doing it, which tote you plumb to, because they're all gonna be plumbed together in parallel out the spigot. So as one tank starts to fill up with water, the water gets pushed over to tank number two and then three, and they all fill up equally. So let's go ahead and climb back up. Let's plumb from this corner of the barn over to the first IBC tote, save us some pipe, and then we'll start working on the stuff on the bottom. First thing we're gonna do is go ahead and take the fitting off the top of this first tote. Now they typically come with just a two inch male MPT plug. Down at the box store, you can pick up your two inch MPT to two inch PVC fitting. This one actually is kind of nice. These, these caps are a little bit better than the ones I bought off of Amazon for the garden. It has a gasket right on the top. So this can just thread in. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue everything. I do use a two inch flexible coupling on the top of the IBC tote. And I do that because even though I can't lift this IBC tote when it's full of water, if it's not full, I would like the ability to come in here and disconnect the IBC tote if it needs to be washed or replaced, if it got a hole or something like that. I can just simply unhook that coupling and then take care of this tote. Okay, so this is where we're at after 20 minutes of fumbling around. We do have a nice slope coming down through here. I don't particularly like the 90 degree turn that it's taking right here. Um, perhaps if I had another 45, I would slip that in there. We can make something a little bit more gentle, but I think this will work for now, or at least we'll see how it works. So I'm gonna go ahead, prime, glue everything in. Let's move around to the front of the IBC totes. All right, so I went to look at the footage of me assembling this and I had no footage. So let me briefly explain what's going on here. If you watch our last video, the video before last, when we pick up these totes, I briefly explained what kind of threads they, these IBC totes have. This IBC tote has a two inch buttress thread. You can get IBC totes like the one in our garden that has a two inch male NPT. Now, because PVC can't screw on to buttress thread, you can buy these adapters on Amazon to help you out. So that's got this guy right here. Then we have the two inch female MPT to two inch pipe. That screws on just like that. Then we have a piece of two inch pipe in here and then one in here. So there's two small sections of pipe and this flexible coupling is in place so I can take this whole assembly off if I need. That way if we need to clean it out or I need to move the tote, again, I can uncouple everything and move it. These two sections of pipe right here are going to go out to the end totes. This guy right here has a two inch plug with a three quarter inch NPT thread in it so we can thread in a faucet. The next step is to go ahead and put some UV protection on these IBC totes. If you don't protect the IBC totes from UV light, you're going to get some algae growth on the inside and the water could potentially not be safe for yourself or your livestock to use. So we purchased three IBC tote UV covers off of Amazon. I'm going to throw those on real quick and then we're going to do a full walkthrough of the whole system and show you what we got. All right, so we are all completed on this project. We have our three IBC totes all set up. We have UV covers on them to block the light. 
These UV covers do come with an access hole on the top. That way you can access the lid of the IBC tote. Now, one thing I do want to know is I am going to be plumbing an overflow out of this port over here and then down the side of the IBC tote. That way, when all three of these totes are full, the water gets pushed out and over the side of these IBC totes. It is important, however, if you're not going to plumb an overflow that you leave one of these caps loose. That way these tanks can depressurize once they're full. As you can see here, we have all three of the tanks all plumbed together. We have our spigot on there. We have a splitter so we can run a hose line to the pigs and fill up buckets. And over here, you can see that we hit the filtration system with a coat of brown paint that matches the gutters. Now this side of the barn actually faces our neighbors and we just wanted to make it a little bit less intrusive for our neighbors and as we're driving up the road. Now I think it looks great and I can't wait to have all this water storage up here. It's going to take quite a while to fill all these tanks, but our chickens are just right on the other side of this barn. And it's going to be nice to just get our water here instead of having to haul it up from the house every single day. But that's gonna be a wrap on this video, everybody. If you liked this video, hit that like button. It means a lot to us. If you have any questions about the details I went into or any general questions at all, throw them down there in that comment section and I'll get back to you. If you wanna see more content of our homestead growing, hit that subscribe button. But until next time, guys, we hope you have a great day.